You're gonna tell me so I can suck in when you take my picture. <laughs> so who are you? I'm Brian Borland. And you are? I'm the publisher of Sibling Rivalry Press. Now, tell me, point out to me, tell me about what you do. We publish poetry, fiction, uh, memoir, photography from Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, our late, some of our latest works include Sad Girl Poems from Christopher Soto, um, Loma. I've also got a new novel from Colin Ke Kelly, the third book from his Venus trilogy, Leaving Paris. Um, we published the uh, literary journal for gay poetry, Asarakis, uh, which is really the only print journal of its kind. We're on issue 22. We publish regularly. You told every... me something about that, that they, yeah. you were accepted in the Library of Congress or something? Sure. Well, we're currently on issue 22. We publish it every three months, but all of our titles are housed in the Library of Congress Rare Book and Special Collections Vault. Now, is that something you have to be selected for by committee or by... Absolutely. You're invited to be housed there. So, you've got our books on the left is Abraham Lincoln's writing. On the, on the right is Houdini's Magic Collection. So, it's a really, really cool thing. And I love that our, our works and our authors are housed there for perpetuity, which is a word I had to learn to say when I'm talking about this stuff. So yeah, I'm really proud of that, but I couldn't have done it without our authors, um, like people like Colin, who really help us do this. We published this from Arkansas, so I think that's what sets us apart. We have more friends in, um, you know, more friends in New York than anywhere in the world. We've got more friends in California, too. They want us to move different places, Asheville, yeah, North Carolina. Website. We do, but we're gonna stay in we, we're gonna stay in Arkansas for now. But uh, our website is uh, <laughs> www.siblingrivalrypress.com. And tell me what pick out two or three books and tell me something that's exciting about this this wide array of books. Sure, this is Casey Rochetown. This is her book, The Dozen. Casey won the first ever Write a House competition where she was awarded a house, free and clear. Billy Collins was, was a judge. And Billy Collins picked her book, or her, her work, and so she got a house. And she can um, live in it as long as she writes poetry. So Casey's, uh, Casey's book, The Dozen, That's is sort really... sort of the poet's version of the MacArthur Prize. Absolutely. They give you a million dollars. Yeah, so Casey's really killing it. Um, uh -huh. You know, you've also got anything that Michael Klein ever does, this is his latest, When I Was a Twin, anything that Michael Klein ever does is, is really phenomenal. So I'm really proud of that. Uh -huh. uh, and Ralph Hamilton's latest book, Teaching a Man to Unstick His Tail, was just nominated for a Lambda Award in Gay Poetry. Uh, but, you know, as far as the Lambda Award goes, we're the only press who ever won a Lambda Literary Award in both Gay Poetry for uh, he do the uh, gay he do the gay man in different voices by Stephen S. Mills, and a Lambda Award winner in lesbian poetry, mysterious acts by my people from Valerie Wetlofer. So um, we've won both of those Lambda Literary Awards. And I uh, now you mentioned you do memoirs as well. We do memoirs. We just published a collection of essays, and we publish anything. And our we're currently open for submissions through June first. Any genre, any length. Anything you want to throw at us, and and how are these? How are things published? I mean, what kind of a print run are you put them out digitally? We're print on demand. Out? We started print on demand six years ago. There was a lot of stigma with print on demand. I don't think there's any stigma with print on demand anymore. We can control our print runs with that. We order what we need. Um, you know, and, and if we ever need to make an alteration or a change or update a book, we can do that immediately. We order as many as we want, and it's allowed us to really stay in business. And we made a profit you brought, last year. You brought sort of technology to the field of publishing. I just that was I wasn't scared. Of, of trying it and it's worked for us. How we can, many titles do you have in total? About 80 or so and growing. Do you have any transgender titles? Yes, yes, um, and, and that's really, um, you know, um, Christopher Soto identifies as non binary, so um, that's really, um, this has really been successful for us. Um, and they are really a fantastic poet, but that's trans poetry is really what I want to focus on moving forward. I think there's really an audience for it. And I think particularly in the middle of the country, there's a need for it. And that's what I want to do, bring that to the I middle of the country. I suggest you read a book called Trans Love. Trans Love. Yeah. I will it's, do that. It's a, a remarkable book. Yeah. Okay. So if there's any trans... A lot of very short, very short. They're all like three, four, five pages long, but there's such... It's such diversity, yeah. your mind is just spinning in a, in a cyclone all the way through. So this this is a call for any trans poet to, to submit work to us. I'm particularly interested in that right now. Open uh -huh. submission right now. Send us, send us their work. 
Is there any is there any area that either has surprised you or you found particularly uh, appealing? In other words, to is lesbian poetry say more more or less than male, you know, or is there any genre of poetry or any genre? Of I, I tell you what has surprised me. It's when we go, it's not necessarily a genre. It's when we go to places like Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri. We don't know how we're going to be received at book fairs that are not queer focused. We go in there, we sell so many books. People in Memphis, people in St. Louis, people in Kansas City, they're so hungry for books like this, and we're really, really proud to bring those to them. Wow. Do you talk, do you give any talks at college campuses or? Yeah, absolutely. I, I've, I've spoken at Juilliard. Um, I, I speak. Um, I love speaking to high school students. I speak at, to uh, Arkansas Governor School, which is 16-year-old uh, rising seniors every summer. I love speaking to them. Um, I'm going to be going to Oklahoma State in the fall. Um, I'm always. I'm taking bookings. I've got a book coming out from a new press in uh, in September, so I'm taking bookings this fall. I'll be doing a book tour and traveling and speaking. I can do. Um, panels on publishing, speak about poetry, read my own work. So yeah, I'm getting out there. Do you get any any hostility from any place, or you find the it? only hostility I've ever received was when our books were inducted into the Library of Congress Rare Book and Special Collections Vault, and the Christian News Service ran a news story about me with my face, it looked like a mugshot. It was wonderful about how I was uh, how I was promoting um, this with government money, Asarakis. They were just really highly offended, and I tell you what. I was I was uh, really delighted in that because controversy creates cash. So bring it on, baby. Oh, really? You got more hits and sold more books because of that? Absolutely, oh. absolutely. I'm. I, they was a Christian. Christian the, news service or something. One of the Christian publications came to interview me, and they tried to set me in the curb with Christopher Street in the background. So I just sort of freaked them out because I wore a Jesus tie. I'm not not yeah. religious, but yeah. I look like the perfectly. I'll steer, and I wouldn't let them pose me in the gutter with the Christopher Street sign oh, in the background. Yeah. You gotta watch them, they'll always try to frame you. You do, you do. Yeah. I've learned that. Okay, and uh, so, a w, Sibyl, Sibling Rivalry Press. Sibling Rivalry Press. Is there a reason that you have that name? Yes, I started writing when I was 13 years old, right when my older brother died. Uh, his law sort of led me to, to write, and so I named it. Uh -huh sort of to honor him. So sibling and how rivalry. many submissions do you get? Um, last year we got nearly a thousand during our open submission. Isn't it very difficult to, to read them or? It's very difficult to read them. It's, we, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult. And there's so many people I want to publish. And I say yes way more than I should. And, uh, well, yeah. there's a there's a, a investment of money on your time and money on time your money, part, right? Time and money, right? Time and money. How about people that want to self-publish? I'm very. Uh, Do you distribute any self-published books or anything like that, or is if that we if we publish them, they're published by us, so it's not self-publishing. But I do believe in self-publishing. That's where I got started. My first book was self-published. I don't think there's any stigma. I think if you do it right, if the book looks good, and you sell it, and you do a tour, and you really treat it, because you get any radio interviews or any TV interviews? I've got a radio interview coming up in, this fall in in Hot Springs, Arkansas, boyhood home of Bill Clinton, and so I'm looking forward to that. So I love old school media. Okay, well, thank you very much, and I look forward to visiting you on your website. Thank you.